The seven star terror raid photo terror is back in Scarlet and Violet for its final time. In today's video, we are going to cover the fastest solo build so you can beat this mightiest mock Pokemon easily in game. The event is running from the 22nd to the 24th of November. And in today's video, we are featuring two builds to help you make easy work of this seven star Pokemon. The first build is a Pokemon that is available to everyone who has the based Scarlet and Violet games, so you won't need the DLCs for this one. Obolivia is a pure grass type set to level 100 and its IVs have been hyper drained to 31 has a grass terra typing and has the held item the covered cloak this will in particular prevent any special defense drops from earth power that's used by torterra its moveset is charm sunny day growth and giga drain and just make sure that you do pp max giga drain with a modest nature and EV spread of 252 EVs in defense and special attack, with that remaining 4 EVs in its HP stat. The Obelvia should look like this when it's fully trained. We'll jump into the raid now and I'll show you how easy it can be to take down Torterra. Oh, after the turn 0 shell smash where the Torterra boosts its attack, special attack and speed by plus 2, nullifies those defense drops, turn 1 we're going to lock in with a charm. That's just going to mitigate those attack boosted it's just hard and we're going to kind of keep it in check as well we'll take an earthquake for our trouble it will activate the seed source so the earthquake going to be reduced damage going forward in this raid the charm is going to reduce its attack by two stages like i say going to kind of keep that torterra in check just in this initial setup of the raid now turn two we're going to lock in with a sunny day that's just going to allow us the room when it has nullified the stats and abilities on our side of the field to be able to uh, set up a growth because that's going to be the big thing in this raid now we'll go for a sunny day here and that's all set up so that's good and what we're looking out for now is the fact when it does nullify those stats and abilities on our side of the field and that'll give us the room to be able to then go for a growth we don't want to get too greedy in this raid we're going to lock in turn three with a giga drain if turn two you're really low health for whatever reason you take a crit or anything like that then just go for a giga drain turn three go for the sunny day but now we're just going to lock in with another Giga Drain following turn. It's only going to chip down our Terrestrialization counter, get us closer to being able to Terrestrialize, maximize our damage, of course, and keep us healthy in this initial stage of the raid, which is the big thing that we want while we wait for that message to pop up. Like we've talked about before, we can take advantage of that growth because that's the big thing in this raid that we want to make sure that we are doing. You can see here, there's the message, and now we're kind of free. As long as our health is in a good position, it is... We can go for that growth and under the sun growth is going to give us the boost of plus two to our special attack and our attack stats so it gives us the ability to really take advantage of that field effect and we're going to be in the position now just to kind of spam giga drain for the rest of the raid because if you can weave in another growth here or there do it because it will speed up the raid way way more than what you would imagine uh, but it's very difficult to do it's very risky because you can put yourself in a really vulnerable place and you're kind of relying on damage rolls if you go for that second growth now you can see here the earth power going to come out it's going to take us pretty low if you go for a growth here you're kind of then relying on it to go for earthquake the next turn or it to have some sort of mitigating factor like a burn or intimidate support in this situation or as i'd say the most consistent method here is always going to be just going for that gear drain the next turn just to make sure that you've got the health to be able to get through to be able to terrestrialize this next turn like we're about to do and then take advantage of things from there because you can see the shell smash going to come out from the torterra as well it's going to further boost its attack and its special attack of course put it up to plus two attack plus four special attack and plus four speed so it's always going to be out out speeding us um we are going to now Rastalize when we've got the opportunity and lock in with that Giga Drain here. And this is pretty much for the rest of the raid where we'll be just locking in with that Giga Drain. There is going to be situations where if you've got room to, like I've said, get the sunny day up, get that growth up, get to plus four, it will speed the raid up massively. But the more consistent method of this, the less greedy way of going about beating Torterra consistently with Arbolavia is going to be just getting that one growth up. You can see the damage coming out from the Earth Power here. It's going to be huge damage but because we have the grassy terrain up it is boosting our giga drain and we are terrestrialized so we're going to be doing more damage going forward in the raid so you can see it's going to have to try and out damage us and i don't know if it's going to be able to for the rest of the raid while we can sit here quite happily and just click this giga drain button and just chip down at it 
we'll catch up with the raid timer of course and then we'll close things up pretty quickly after that so just that initial setup that you need to kind of get through this part of the raid and the giga drain as long as that grassy terrain is in effect on the field still going to be doing pretty significant damage to the torterra and like you can see we've already caught up with the raid timer and now we'll be pretty close to breaking the shield this next turn and then another couple of giga drains after that and we'll be sitting pretty but it will revert to going for the earth power at some point in the raid because that's going to be its biggest damaging attack the wood hammer is not going to be doing as much the earthquake of course is weakened by the, the grassy terrain on the field so there are all the things that you just need to take into consideration just don't get too greedy when you're playing the Arbolavia I think you've got to play the kind of the, the longer game it's still pretty quick in regards to if you're comparing it to something like Orthworm that a lot of players have been having success with and there's no reason not to use that Pokemon because consistency wise it is always going to beat the Torterra pretty consistently but the Arbolavia is a lot faster I think as you can see the shield has been broken here and we're sitting pretty healthy and I think just the initial setup of that charm that we do the growth that's all we need for the rest of the raid like i say if you can get two off it does speed it up there is occasions where i've been able to do it with the two growths and it's been so much faster we've cleared the cleared the raid by now but for consistency reasons i think it's better just to just not get greedy go for one growth get to plus two under the sun and you're going to be sitting pretty nice in a position where you can see how quick we've ran through the raid once we've done that initial setup and Tolterra is pretty easy as well. I mean, if you've got a partnering or Bolivia on your side of the field, it does make things a bit easier because that seed sower ability is going to be activated a little bit quicker than what it would be normally and always present on the field, which makes things a lot easier, boosting the Giga Drain damage. But that is how easy it can be to take down the Torterra. Nice and easy. Nearly 50% left on the raid timer, just below there. We'll say 40%. But then you, if you haven't done it already, of course, you're going to be able to catch a Torterra and whatever ball that you like and you can hopefully get some good item drops as well with the Herba Mystic have been one of those three percent drops that you've got the chance of from the rewards and that is Torterra there for you of course we've caught ours so we just need the item drops and we get two Herba Mystica so that's good so hopefully that luck carries on over to you as well when you're doing this event over the weekend a second featured build isn't one that's easily available to everyone, but is an extremely fast way to run through seven star Torterra if you have access to it through Pokemon Home, Legends Arceus, or Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. That Pokemon is Arceus, it comes in at level 100, of course it is hyper trained and has a grass terra typing with the held item of the Meadow Plate. With this item it turns Arceus into a pure grass type Pokemon. Its moveset is Chilling Water, Acid Spray, Calm Mind and Giga Drain with an EV spread of 252 EVs in Special Attack and in Defense with the remainder put into HP with a modest nature. Turn one, we're going to lock in straight away with the Chilling Water. Because of the high base speed on Arceus, we're going to be naturally able to outspeed it even after the Shell Smash, which gives us the opportunity to lower that attack stat to kind of keep that Torterra in check because we don't want to be taking too much damage from those Earthquakes. If you have something like Intimidate user or a will o -Wisp user, it's going to help mitigate that damage as well. Turn two, we're going to lock in with another Chilling Water just to kind of remove those stat boosts altogether going forward in the raid. And it also ticks down our terrestrialization counter, which is the big thing that we want to do in this raid. If we do have all Bolivia on our side of the field, of course, that grassy terrain is going to be really useful as well. So that's another thing that does definitely help us out with the health recovery, of course, and also lowering the attack power of that earthquake. Now, turn three, we're going to lock in with an acid spray. So that's going to start to reduce the special defense on that Torterra even further by minus two and we kind of essentially want to get it down to minus six before we start attacking we are going to take an earth power for our trouble but we take that pretty comfortably going forward and like always with these raids we're waiting for it to nullify the stats and abilities on our side of the field now we can lock in with our terrestrialization already so that's quite nice after turn four so we will lock in with that turn into a grass terra type and we'll go for another acid spray while we've got the opportunity to. If you've taken a lot of damage at this stage in the battle, just lock in with the Giga Drain. There's no rush here to uh, risk it getting knocked out at all, but we're not really in any danger of getting knocked out, so we can afford to go for another Acid Spray. This will take the Torterra's special defense down to minus four. Uh, one more will take it down to minus six. It can't get any lower than that as we take an Earth Power for our trouble. And we're probably in that position now where we want to start getting those Calm, Mind, calm Minds under our belt. So, 
pretty low health at this stage, but at the same time, we've probably got room where we're going to be able to get a calm mind off and then start attacking from there. So what we'll do is we'll lock in with one more calm mind. We'll start getting those off. That's going to boost our special attack and our special defense by one stage every time we use this. So just boosting that power and allowing us to take this earth powers a lot better from the Torterra going forward, because that is what it's going to primarily lock in with. As long as that grassy terrain's on the field now we take that pretty comfortably but probably at that stage where we want to lock in with a giga drain get some damage onto the field because it is going to remove the negative effects from itself as you can see and go for another shell smash so it's going to be hitting a bit harder it's going to be a bit faster as well so that's something to kind of just be aware of so we want to just make sure that we aren't getting knocked out that's the big thing in most of these raids where once we terrestrialize we don't want to waste that terrestrialization we can't go for it again so we'll lock in with that giga drain get some health back as we speak but we are going to take a wood hammer for our trouble just barely hanging on there with that wood hammer thankfully not boosted by the grass that's in there but this giga drain going to do more than enough damage just to be able to kind of recover some health off and because it has nullified those stats on its side of the field we have to go for those acid sprays again so we've got the opportunity where we can lock in with the acid sprays go for another three of those take it down to minus six you probably don't need to go to the full extent of getting down to minus six here but if it does lock in with the earthquake then we're going to be in a fine position to be able to kind of soak those up and it gives us enough room to go for those acid sprays so ideally all bolivia is going to be a perfect partnering pokemon if you're coming into this raid especially if you've got an intimidate user as well that's going to make it a lot easier but it just look at the draw if you're not using the methods that we've shown in previous videos of how you can lock in those certain partner Pokemon. We're going to take a wood hammer, but we are going to get another acid spray off as well. And we've still got that calm mind under our belt. Just one calm mind, just bear in mind. So if you can weave in a few more throughout the setup, then you're going to be kind of fine with the Arcus. And we'll soon enough be able to kind of catch up with the raid timer and close this match out. We're just going to go for a Giga Drain here because we don't want to take any unnecessary risks here. I get too low, as you can see, the wood hammer doing big damage at this point in the raid but the giga drain going to be more than enough to kind of help us recover a lot of that health off as you can see we're nearly breaking the shield there so you can imagine the damage if you're able to get another acid spray off to take it down to minus six you're going to be able to really close this raid up very very quickly arceus i think one of the fastest probably methods to being able to take down the torterra especially when you do have that partnering or bolivia to the raid then you can see we're nearly taking it down uh, with the raid timer just below 50% as an earthquake is going to come out. But as I say, Obolivia, big MVP of this battle here, helping us out as one of the best raid partners against the Torterra. Most of the time you'd be like, okay, well, the Woodhammer is boosted, but also at the same time, if it does lock into that earthquake, it's not really going to be doing any significant damage in this raid. We can kind of mitigate those boosting options that the Torterra's got for the most part with the chilling water with that calm mind so there it is as easy as that to take down with the Arceus of course once you've got it like always you'll be able to catch it for the first time one per save file and uh, if you've already caught it you'll just be able to pick up the item drops and hopefully you get some good ones with those Herba Mystica if you're doing it with the Arceus over this weekend course a very solid way to beat it and get two for our trouble if you found today's video useful please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our pokemon skull and violet content as always if you have your own builds do leave them in the comment section down below it goes a long way to helping others who might be having a harder time with this raid and if you want another easy and fast way to beat seven star torterra check out this video here which shows you how to take down this mightiest mock pokemon with a haunter thanks for tuning in friends have a great rest of your day and i'll see you all in another video very soon so until then take care bye bye